Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at additional itemized deductions and specifically, we're going to be looking at taxes. This topic is covered in an income tax course, CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. And this topic covers the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. As always, I would like to remind my viewers to connect with me on a personal as well as a professional level. My LinkedIn account is where I house some of my lectures and post news related topics about CPA exam and accounting. If you're a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page and connect with me on a personal level. YouTube is where I house all my lectures. Please subscribe, like the channel, like the videos, share them and put them in playlist. And I do have a Twitter account. On my website, I do share my uh, courses organized by chapter. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording, you can find hundreds of hours of video lectures on Jaeger CPA Review. And if you're a CPA or an accounting student, you can supplement your studies with thousands of multiple choice questions with de detailed answers, simulations, textbook, CPA textbook, audio lectures for retention purposes, electronic flashcards, plus other. If you happen to use Jaeger CPA Review, use PM, P, PMF code to get 10% off of the best valued course. You would benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So today we're going to be discussing taxes. Taxes as they, as they relate to the itemized deduction. Now in the previous session, we covered medical and dental expenses. In this session, we'll cover taxes that you paid. So taxes, there are itemized deductions. In the following session, we'll cover interest and gifts to charities. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand is what's the idea? Why, what, generally speaking, why do government, uh, federal government allows you to, um, to, uh, to deduct the taxes? Well, your revenue is taxed on a multiple, uh, uh, multiple taxes on the same amount of revenue. What does that mean? It means when you are getting paid from your employer, the federal government takes a cut, the state government takes a cut, and the local government takes a cut. So it's the same amount of revenue and it's taxed more than once. So the federal government saying, since you paid those taxes, we're gonna give you a deduction. And simply put, when you pay those taxes, it's gonna be affecting your ability to pay federal taxes. It's gonna lower your income. Therefore, for equity, from an equity perspective, they would say, we should allow you to deduct your some of your taxes. So what taxes are deductible? In addition to the state and local income taxes, state and local foreign income taxes, and real property taxes are deductible in the year paid. So the year that you pay those taxes, those taxes are deductible, the year paid. Okay. Real property taxes do not include taxes assessed for local benefits. What does that mean? Sometimes what they do is let's assume they fix the sidewalk, they fix the curbing, then they add, you know, $500 or $600 to your property taxes assessed. It's an assessed fee. Assessed fee or special assessment, sometimes they call them special assessment, are not. Those are not taxes. Therefore, they are not tax deductible. Okay. Special assessment for street, sidewalk, curbing, and other similar improvement do not are not included with taxes. Therefore, they are not deductible. Okay. So what? How do we define property taxes? State and local property taxes based on value ad valorem are deductible. So it's based on the value of the property in the year paid in the year paid other taxes such as FICA excise taxes any other taxes they are not deductible FICA is Social Security and Medicare Social Security and Medicare are not deductible okay they might be deductible if you own a business or a production of income activity but not for schedule a purposes anything that's that sounds like a fee is not tax, it's not deductible as a tax. Fees are not, not the same thing as taxes, okay? So here's a list of, and this, this is a list of what's deductible and what's not. And this could be a question on the CPA exam, okay? Uh, what's deductible, okay? I would, I, would, I would remember what's deductible because it's easier. State and local foreign real, uh, foreign real, real property taxes, state, local, personal property taxes, state, local income taxes, or, notice here, or sales or use tax and foreign income tax. 
What's not deductible? The federal income tax. You cannot deduct the taxes that you want to pay taxes on. Federal income tax is not deductible. FICA, which is federal unemployment tax. Employer FICA, employee FICA, that's not deductible. Um, I'm sorry, employer FICA taxes paid on domestic household worker. State inheritance and gift taxes, not deductible. Federal, state, and local excise taxes. Those are gasoline, tobacco, spirits. Those are not deductible excise taxes foreign income taxes if the taxpayer chooses the foreign tax credit option so notice foreign tax credit can be deductible but if you choose the option of the foreign tax credit option then foreign income taxes are not deductible taxes on property to the extent such taxes are to be apportioned and treated as imposed on another taxpayer and this is what we'll talk about in the next thing so when you buy a property what happened is this when you buy a property Let's assume we're using January 1st till December 31st, okay? If you, if you buy the property here, okay, if you are the buyer, then you are responsible for the taxes from this date till the end of the year, and the seller is responsible for this portion. So you want to make sure you prorate the real estate taxes between the buyer and the seller. So let's take a look at this topic. So real estate taxes for year property is sold must be apportioned, which is split appropriately on a prorated basis between the buyer and the seller okay why because failure to correctly apportion require offsetting adjustment to seller amount realized and the buyer's adjustment basis so basically what we're doing is, is, is we're pre preventing the shifting of deduction from one taxpayer to the other so simply put i buy i, I buy the property but this buy but the seller pays all the real estate taxes well, guess what? The seller cannot deduct the whole year real estate taxes because I bought the property and now I qualify for a portion of the year. Now, what's that portion of the year? Well, it's the portion of the year that I own the property, whatever that portion of the year happens to be. So let's take a look at examples to illustrate this concept. This is an important concept, so you want to make sure you understand this. Okay. A county's real property tax return runs from January till December. Sarah, the owner on January 1st of real property located in the county, sells the real property to Bob. So Sarah is the seller, Bob is the buyer. S for sale, B for, you know, buying the property on June 30th. Bob owns the property from June through December. So simply put, on the calendar year, the transaction took place in June. So Sarah owned the property here, Bob owned the property here. So the real estate taxes that apply to this period is deducted by Sarah. The real estate property that deduct, that are applied to this period belongs to Bob. It doesn't matter who who paid them, who paid them. If Sarah paid the whole year, we'll need to make an adjustment. If Bob paid the whole year, we need to make an adjustment. Okay? The tax for the real property tax year January 1st till December is 36.50. So for the whole year the amount is 36.50. Assuming this is not a leap year, the portion of the real property tax is treated as imposed upon Sarah. So what's Sarah's portion? Well, we have to count from January 1st till June. Well, that's going to be 180 days divided by 365 multiplied by 3 3650, which is from June, I'm sorry, from January till sorry, not June 30th, I apologize, June 29th. Because the day, so on June 30th it becomes Bob, Bob's property, okay? June 30th, it's Bob. The buyer owns the property on the closing day, which is June, June 30th. While 1,850, which is 185 days, divided by 365, 185 days, if you count the days from June 30th till December 31st, there are 185 days, multiplied by 3650, okay? June 30th through December 31st is treated as imposed upon Bob, the buyer. So you cannot shift Okay, so what do you need to know, basically? What, what are the rules that you need to know? Okay, let me just uh, make sure we understand the picture. If not prorated, adjustment is necessary for the consideration received by the seller and the basis of the buyer. So if we don't shift those, if we don't, if we don't make sure they are accounted for appropriately, well, somebody's going to be shifting the tax deduction from one person to the, to the other. If the buyer pays the entire amount, let's assume Bob in this situation paid the entire amount the seller okay increased the consideration received basically the seller received more money than they should 
and the buyer should increase their basis. So if Bob paid the whole thing, if Bob paid $36.50, Bob's basis in the property will go up. And the consideration received for Sarah will go up, will go up as well. Okay, if Bob pays, pays them. Okay, and Bob is benefiting by increasing his basis. Why? Because he paid them. Therefore, when he sells the property in the future, his basis is higher, his taxes are lower. For Sarah, she received uh, money for the taxes she, she shouldn't have paid. So she received the 1800 okay? Therefore, if she received 1800 from Bob because Bob paid the property, then her consideration, what she received, remember what, what, she, what she needs to do at the end of the year, she needs to compute what she received in proceeds, which is consideration received minus adjusted basis. So what's going to happen, her consideration received, what she received, it's going to go up by 1800 now, let's assume the seller pays the entire amount. In other words, Sarah paid the whole property. The seller reduced consideration received. Now, the seller, okay, whatever they, whatever they received, they're going to be reduced by the amount of $1,850. Because the seller, what happened? The seller paid $1,850 extra. Why did they pay the $1,860 extra? Because they picked up Bob's taxes. Well, they would, need, they would need to reduce their consideration receipt. And if they reduced it, it's going to reduce their taxes because it's going to reduce their gain. And the buyer reduced the basis. Well, since Bob received 1850 more for the property because Sarah paid the taxes, then Bob's basis go down. Bob's basis goes down. It means when he sell, when Bob sells the property in the future, in the, future the gain will be 1850 higher because the basis are lower. Let's take a look at this example. Seth sells the property, real estate property, on October 3rd for 400000 So here's the what happened. October 3rd. Let's assume October 3rd is here. And this is where the sale took place. Barbara, the buyer, pays the real estate property for the whole year, which is thirty six fifty. So Barbara paid the whole year property, thirty six fifty. Okay? Now, what do we need to know? We need to know that Barbara, although Barbara paid the property taxes, Barbara can take property taxes for this amount, the, the one that I highlighted in green, and I'm sorry, Barbara, sorry, this is for this is for Seth, because Seth is the seller. Seth will take the property deduction for this amount, and Barbara will take the deduction for this amount, and this is Barbara, although she paid for the whole year, she only can take the deduction for this amount from October 3rd till the end of the year. Assuming this is not a leap year, and here are the 275 days from January 1st till October 3rd, till October 3rd, and what's left is 90 days for Barbara. Okay, so Barbara can deduct $900, and Seth will deduct in real estate taxes $2750. Although Barbara paid the whole thing, but that's the only amount that they can take on their taxes. Now, what's going to happen is this. Barbara has, in effect, paid Seth real estate taxes and therefore paid, and therefore she paid, so Barbara paid 400000 for the property and she paid 2750 So her basis in the property is 402750 That's her basis in the property because she paid more than 400000 Okay? And amount realized by Seth, Seth sold the property for 400000 but Seth also did not have to pay for the real estate taxes of 2750 Therefore, Seth received an additional 2750 So consideration received by Seth is 402750 So notice, since the buyers paid, the buyer's basis goes up and the seller consideration went up because the buyer paid for the property. Okay, hopefully this is, you see this. Let's take a look at another questions. Uh, let's look at Alicia here, okay? Alicia uh, sold her personal residence to Rick on June 30th for 300,000, okay? So the sale took place June 30th. Alicia paid the real estate taxes forty three eighty for the whole year. So for the whole year, the taxes is forty three eighty, and Alicia, the seller, paid the whole thing. 
Now, in, in the previous example, the buyer paid here, the seller paid, okay? For income tax purposes, the deduction is apportioned as follows, 2160 to Alicia and 2220 to Rick. So simply put, what's gonna happen is this. What we're saying is for the on their schedule A, the seller, the seller, which is Alicia, Alicia will deduct uh, 2160 and the buyer will deduct 2220. This is based on the number of days. Okay, so we said from January 1st till June 29th, how many days there is? Uh, we said uh, 180 days. So there are 180 days here, 185 days here, divided by 365, divided by 365 times the taxes. We'll give you this. The taxes are 4380, 4380. Now, they're asking us, what's the Rick's basis in the residence? So, Rick bought the residence. What's his basis in the residence? Well, Rick paid $300,000, but Alicia picked up twenty-two twenty. She paid twenty-two twenty that he's, he was supposed to pay. Well, if somebody paid on your behalf, your basis will gonna go down. So, his basis in the property is 297000 780. What does that mean? It means when he sells the property in the future, his, his adjusted basis is 2220 lower. Therefore, his future gain will be 2220 higher in the future. So basically, he lowers his property. He lowers his property. Now, Alicia on the uh, Alicia, since Alicia paid for the pro since Alicia um, paid yes, since Alicia paid for the property. I'm sorry, since Alicia sold the property, she received 300000 okay? But since she paid an extra twenty two twenty, her consideration will be lowered by twenty two twenty. Therefore, consideration received is 297780000 They're not asking us for this. I want to make sure you understand this, that Alicia's, Alicia's um, consideration received will go down. So if the seller pays for the entire property, the seller reduces consideration. This is this is not considered, this is consideration received and the buyer reduces their basis. So in case of the seller, they both reduce. In the case of the buyer, they both increase. Kind of if you want a shortcut for this to remember for the exam, okay? Notice what happened here, they both increase. The basis are increased for the buyer and the seller increased their consideration received. And the opposite side, when the seller pays, okay? When the seller pays, they both reduce. Consideration received reduced and the basis reduced. So this is an important topic. You wanna, not, not important, I would say, this could appear on your exam or on the CPA exam, okay? Other taxes deductible on Schedule A as, a, as taxes are state and local taxes or, or versus sales and use tax. So you have to choose between the two. You have to choose, you have to choose between the two. You can elect to deduct either, either state and local taxes or sales slash use tax. Okay. For state and local income tax, deduct amount paid during the year. Also deduct the amount withheld and deduct the estimated tax payment and amount paid in the current year for prior year. For example, if you are in 20, I am in 2018. I'm in 2018. In 2018, I might be paying my 2017 taxes. I also might be paying my 2019 future estimate and I will be paying my current taxes. So I could be paying for 2018, could be paying for my taxes for 2017, I could be paying for 2019. As long as they are paid in 2018, they are all considered deductible for 2018. So the amount withheld is the current. Estimate tax payment, I'm estimating for 2019, and amount paid in the current year for prior liability, 2017. So this is, if you want to look at this this way, this is 2018, the current withholding, and I'm pay, I could be paying for 2019, especially the fourth quarter. What happened is this, in the fourth quarter of 2018, I'm paying, I could be paying 2019 taxes, okay? Amount paid in the current year for prior period, I, I could also be paying in 2018, paying 2017 taxes. As long as they are all paid in 2018, they are all deductible in 2018, okay? So the year that you make the payment, what matters? 
paid during the year. Okay. For sales or use tax, you will deduct the actual sales or use tax. And just actual sales is basically you just have to keep receipts of your sales. Every time you make a purchase, keep receipts, keep receipts of your sales tax or use tax. What is use tax? If you buy something online and they don't charge you, let's assume I live in PA. I do live in PA. I buy something online. And when I buy that thing online, I bought it from another state, California. I don't know if California, they charge sales tax or not. I'm just making just making this up. So if I buy it from California and I paid $1,000, they shipped it to me, it's tax free, sales tax free. Now in Pennsylvania, what I'm supposed to do at the end of the year, I'm supposed to take the $1,000 multiplied by 6% and pay the state $60 on this. We call this use tax because I did not pay taxes on it. Or I live in PA and I know in Delaware, they have no sales tax. So you, what you do is you would drive across the border buy a TV or a car from Delaware, like, you know, $20,000 car, and you will save yourself 6% in taxes. That's a lot. Okay, that's 1200 So if you cross the, cross the borderline, buy it in Delaware and drive it back, you saved yourself. You're supposed to pay use tax. This is what the use tax is. Okay. So you would either keep, keep track of your actual or use tax payment, or you can go to the IRS, and there's a table from the IRS, depending on your income and other factors, Okay, the table may be increased by sales tax paid on certain items such as purchase of motor vehicle or boat. You could add those. Otherwise, the IRS gives you a number. They assume you paid, you are going to uh, purchase that much per year. And this, this is your, assumed to be your sales tax. Okay, if you don't want to keep track. So you will choose either or. Okay, obviously you want to use the higher. Okay, so you have to choose between this and this and force it. And for sales or use tax, you could use the actual or the IRS number, okay? Let's take a look at this example to see how we treat any refund from taxes. So if you received a refund, okay? So in one year you received a refund, is that amount taxable or not? And also let's find out how much we can deduct per year. Norma, who's single and uses cash method of accounting, lives in a state that imposes an income tax. In April 2018, she files her income tax return for 2017. So let's take a look at kind of, let's draw, I mean, let me, let me do this, let me draw a picture here. So we are in 2018. And what she did in 2018, she filed her 2017 taxes. She filed her 2017 taxes and she files her 2017 taxes and paid an additional $1,000 in income taxes. There we go. So in 2018, she paid one thousand dollar for 2017 is that deductible yes it is because we're dealing in 2018 that's deductible in 2018 so she filed her taxes and she paid 2017. during 2018 her withholding for state income tax purposes amounted to seven thousand four hundred well the current taxes that they took from her paycheck seven thousand four hundred and that's for 2018 paid in 2018 and she paid she pays an estimated state income tax of 700 well and she paid an additional 700 dollar is an estimate for 2019. in april 2019 she files her income tax return for 2018 and claimed the refund of 1800. okay so when she filed her income tax return so in 2019 she filed her income tax return and she got a refund from 2018. Norma received a refund in August. Norma has no other state or local tax expense. Assume that Norma itemized deductions in 2018. How much may she claim as a deduction for state income taxes on her federal return calendar year 2018? Filed in 20, April 2019. Well, in 2018, she paid her 2017 taxes, the $1,000. She paid the withholding $7,400, and she also made estimated payment of $700. So all in all, $1,000 plus $7,400 plus 700, all in all, she paid 9,100 in taxes. That's how much she paid in 2018, and that's how much she can deduct in 2018 taxes that she filed in 2019. Assuming that Norma itemized deduction in 2018, which totaled 20,000, so she itemized all her deduction and she totaled 20,000, how much will the refund of 1,800 that she received in 2019 be treated for federal income tax purposes? Guess what, since she got a benefit of 20,000, 
guess what? And that benefit is way above 9,100. So the 9,100, the whole thing benefited her. Therefore, and she received 1,800, well, that amount is taxable because she did get a benefit from those deductions. Therefore, if she received any refund, that refund is taxable. Assume that normal Norma itemized deduction in 2018, which totaled 20,000, and she elects to have 1,800 refund applied toward 2019 state income tax liability. It doesn't matter. Even if you told the state, don't give me the refund, apply it for next year, how will the 1,800 be treated? It's still taxable, although she didn't get the money, but she could have got the money, okay? So basically what happened, when you have a refund, you'll tell the state, don't send me back the check, apply the check for next year. It doesn't matter whether you get the check or not, the amount would still be taxable. Assuming that Norma did not itemize deduction in 2018, how would the refund of 1800 received in 2019 be treated for federal income tax purposes? Not taxable. If you did not get a benefit, if you did not itemize your state income tax, you didn't get a benefit. Therefore, if you get a refund, the refund is not taxable. So the refund only taxable to the extent you were benefited when you, you benefited when you itemized your deduction. And in this situation, we're assuming you itemized 20,000, it means you took advantage of the whole amount of the whole 9,100. Any money you get back is taxable. To the extent benefiting you, the whole thing benefited you. One more thing you want to know about the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, overall limit on state and local income taxes from 2018 to 2025. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 limit the deduction for all state and local income taxes to a maximum of 10,000 per year. If you're married filing separately, 5,000. That includes property taxes and either income taxes or sales tax. So all, everything. So simply put, when it comes to this section here, let me go back here to the Schedule A. Simply put, this schedule, this, clear everything, this section here, the maximum you would have is you're limited to $10,000. Before it was unlimited. Now, you might be saying, hold on a second, what's going on here? Well, what's going on here? We increased your standard deduction, therefore we're taking away some of the itemized deduction. We're reducing your itemized deduction. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means email me. Um, if you're studying for your CPA exam, by all means study hard. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating.